Hi everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name's Sophie, I'm a makeup artist from Scotland, so you might need some subtitles to understand me. However, today I'm gonna to be bringing you this look, which I've just had such pleasure creating. It's a super sassy, sexy, smoky, winged out green, maybe like khaki green eyeshadow look. So yeah, something that you maybe wouldn't normally reach for, but I'm gonna be showing you today exactly how you can make your lighter eyeshadow colors a little bit more wearable. So yeah, this is gonna be part of like a wearable color series. I'm not gonna be bashing them out one after the other. Just every now and again, I'm gonna hit you with a color when you least expect it and show you how you can make it a little bit more wearable. So today obviously I'm using khaki greens which I just feel like with all of the skin tone it always looks really really nice. So if you are using green eyeshadow I do suggest a little bit of fake tan. I did a fresh one last night. As always guys all of the products I'm going to be using today will be linked below in the description box. So if you want to know how I created this green eyeshadow look please keep watching. Okay guys so I've already done this eye and I'm just going to be going ahead and doing this one to match it up to show you how I created it. Now I know what you're thinking green eyes oh my goodness like that's a bit much but honestly as a makeup artist one of my favourite things to do is take a colour like green and just make it like wearable and make it look like I would actually wear that because I think at first thought when you think of green eyeshadow you're like mm -mm, not today <laughs> but when you see it done in a way that looks wearable you're like absolutely and I just think this is a way of wearing it it looks soft, it looks really sexy, but it's not too bright. So the palette that I'm going to be using today is a palette that is massively used within my makeup kit. And when I seen this coming out, I was like, I absolutely need to get that. And it is the, excuse me, I do actually need to get a new one because it's that well used. The Be Perfect Clientele Palette. So this is a collaboration with Ja, who's a makeup artist in Australia. I have followed her for years and when they were bringing out a palette with her, I was like, this is fake. If you're a makeup artist, and you don't have this, it is unreal. It's got something for everyone. It's got everything you need. The shades of green in this palette, oh my God. Like I've never seen them in any other palette. So they're really beautiful, so easy to work with. I literally got no fallout when I was doing this eye. So really highly recommend this palette. And obviously if you aren't a makeup artist, it's a good palette to have because it's got neutrals, it's got a little bit of cool tones, it's got pinks, oranges, greens, and then it's got the most unreal shimmer shades. I'll pop up here so you can have a little look. Apologies that it's not in pristine condition, I definitely need to get a new one. But yeah, this is it right here. Love this palette, big up this palette, and yeah, Be Perfect really hit the nail on the head collaborating with Ja because she is amazing. You need to check her YouTube out as well. Normally I don't carve out my brows on camera because I am lazy, but I'm going to do that today. I'm going to start with this concealer from NARS. I use this all the time in my other videos. It's just a matte concealer but I actually do really like this one for carving out under the brow. This is in the shade Custard and I'm just taking my Delium Tools 934 brush and I'm just going to be like carving out under the brow but like quite softly. I'm not going to come right to the front, I'm just going to start from about here and I'm just going to draw a little line underneath the brow and all that's going to do is literally make it look a lot cleaner. I feel like when you are using bright colours like greens and things like that, all the more not to really carve out the brow because I think when you're using a bright colour you need to try and think of all the other ways to make the eyes look softer. I wouldn't be carving out the brow really harshly or with a really light colour at this stage. So I'm not going to carve out the front of the brow because I like to leave that nice and soft and fluffy and natural looking. And then I'm going to use another concealer as an eyeshadow base. I know that's a bit annoying but I just find this matte concealer here is a lot easier to carve out into the brow than using a liquid concealer which can sometimes get a little messy. So this is a concealer here that I'm going to use on the lid. It's the L'Oreal Infallible Concealer in the shade Cashmere. I link everything that we're using today below guys as always. And I'm just going to go ahead and like pat that on the lid. So I'm just using the same brush and I'm just kind of dotting it all over the lid first. Taking my MAC 286 brush just to buff this all into the lid. And then just start kind of pressing it into the lid as well. So the reason I like to use a liquid sort of concealer or eyeshadow base is just because it is a little bit more sticky than some eyeshadow primers. Therefore, the eyeshadow will cleanse a lot better, especially when you're using sort of more coloured eyeshadow, you're better working with a sticky tacky base. So the first shade that I'm going to be starting with is this beautiful khaki shade. This one here called Warrior in the palette is honestly the most stunning khaki eyeshadow shade I've ever seen and I'm going to just be starting with that colour because it's absolutely going to be the start of the show today. So the brush that I'm using is this Zoeva 227 brush and I like to use this for packing on the colour. So just load 
go for it, don't be shy. And you don't actually get a lot of kickback on these, which is really, really good. And all I'm gonna be doing is literally start at the lash line here and pressing this in. And I'm actually being quite firm with my pressure. Yeah, when I'm doing eyeshadow, always think about my pressure. You use different pressure for different areas. I want to get this color nice and even all the way over the lid. So I'm just really loading up the brush, pressing it in. And then loading up again and pressing it in. If you actually lift your chin up, sometimes it's a little easier to get into the lid. But when I've kind of got most of the eyeshadow on the lid and it's looking pretty dark and pretty even all over, what I'm now going to do is I'm going to just take the excess that's on my brush. It's kind of going to fluff around the edges, changing my pressure to being a little bit more gentle. And I am kind of rounding this shape off. Because I've got a hooded eye, I always have to sort of like look straight ahead at some point and make sure I'm happy with the height of the eyeshadow. As you can see from this side, I do want to sort of wing it out slightly. So at this point, I'm just going to manipulate the shape to kind of wing it a little bit more here. So just with a really light hand, I'm just kind of drawing a tiny line there. And that's just going to start to guide me in the direction I want the shadow to be going. Next up, I'm going to be taking this brush here from Zweeva, it's a 231, it's kind of like a domed brush. And I'm just going to kind of like, I always say fluff, but blend the edges of the green, just with a really light hand, and just to sort of diffuse the edges a bit. And because you've got a tacky eyeshadow waist down, it will already start to help you blend it out. So just really softly pulling over the edges and should already help it to look a lot more blended as you can see there. Okay, so now we're gonna blend the edges even more by going in with a shade here which is called Sandy. You can see it's almost like a sort of bronzer shade. I'm just gonna be using this exact same 231 Zweeva brush and I'm just literally gonna really lightly go over the edges just exactly what we just did but with the Sandy shade on the brush. Not a lot of people know this, but I actually love green eyeshadow. I've got a few clients out there, you know who you are, who are really trusting of me and have come in and just said, do what you want and we end up doing green eyeshadow. And it just always looks so nice, but like so different. If you are darker in colouring, I feel like it really suits that sort of skin tone. Now I'm going to take a 224 by MAC, which is one of my favourite brushes for blending. And I've just put a tiny bit of that sandy shade on as well. And I'm just kind of like pulling that out to the tempo, just really soft. So next up guys, I'm going to be using this colour here, which is called Dirty Tan. And I love this shade, as you can see, it's very well used. It's like the perfect caramel shade. And I'm almost just going to be like popping that, just kind of like between the green and then the sandy shade. I'm just being super light with my pressure and not going like too crazy. And then just straight after, going back in with my 224, just to make sure it all blends together. Obviously, as I said before, the green is the start of the show, and I sometimes just feel like once you've been blending out the edges and stuff, it can diffuse it a little bit too much. So what I am going to do is go back in with the same green, the warrior shade here, and I'm just literally going to pat that all over the lid again. And then when I've got hardly anything left on my brush, I'm just going to flick it out. Now that we've got it looking nice and blended, I'm going to add a little bit more depth into the eye. So I'm going to come back to this little brush that we used earlier. So this colour here is called Too Much. It's just like a really dark brown. And we're just going to use this like on the outer part of the eye. We're just here. I'm just kind of tapping on the product from the outer corner along the inner lash line. Now that I've hardly got any product left on the brush, just flicking it out again. Once you've kind of got a little bit left on your brush as well, you can take it round into the crease. Now, as always, I'm coming back with my 224. I'm actually going to put a little bit of the sandy shade on and I'm just going to use that to help me blend the shadow here just so it's nice and smooth. At this point, I'm going to come back to my MAC brush and a little bit more of the MAC concealer from NARS that we used earlier. Just going to run a little bit of that under the eye just to prepare it for some eyeshadow. Just sharpening this because you want it to have a little point on it. I'm going to just use this pencil to create a small cat eye on the inside of the eye. So this pencil is Mambo from NARS. I use it all the time. It's such a nice like... That's so tickly. I specifically love this brown eyeliner because it's like a really chocolatey warm shade. So to get the cat eye, I always kind of like pull from the inside of the nose here. And I'm just going to pull out from the waterline actually and then connect it. You don't want the cat eye to be like super long because what it actually does is it draws your eyes together. If you need to manipulate the shape, you can just take a little angled brush and even put like some of the product on the angled brush just to like get where you need to be. 
And then I'm just going to take the same angle brush, this one's from my Kiko, and I'm going to be using that dirty tan shade, and I'm just going to like press that right underneath the lash line. Another way of like making the eye softer is just not having a really low blend under the eye. Now I'm just going to line the top of the eye with the same mammal pencil. I'm just going to start like here and draw the inside of the eye. Yeah, I just feel like the brown is like a lot softer than using a black liner when you're using green. Now I'm just going to take this brush here from Sigma, one of my favourite eyeshadow brushes, and a little bit of that to match the dark brown shades. I'm just running that over the eyeliner pencil just to smoke it out a little bit. And I also like to set the inner corner just with a little bit of brown eyeshadow on the angle brush, just because it is obviously a liner pencil, setting it with a little bit of eyeshadow will just ensure it's a little bit more longer wearing. So if I'm adding pigment, this is my absolute favourite, this is the MYX Glitter Primer, and the pigment I'm going to be using is the Camo Base and Sparkle from Jordana Tisha. It's actually got a lot of gold reflex in it, this glitter, so it is really, really nice. I'm going to be taking that same Sigma blending brush, the E36, and I'm literally just going to use a tiny bit of this primer, and I'm literally just going to pat it right in the centre of the eye. Just pop your chin up, and then take it a little bit above. Always stops filming when I'm like a really important bit. Just tap in the excess glitter around the middle so that it's nice and diffused. So next up I'm going to be applying a lash and obviously you could use a super full lash but because I've got hooded eyes again I just feel like these days like I can't get away with it at all. I just can't get away with the really full lashes. I actually was re-watching my NYX video the other day and I was like massively regretting my lash choice. Just thought they drowned my eyes. So now I have the fear and I don't want to wear big lashes again. Using a lighter lash is also going to make it look a bit softer. So these lashes I cannot seem to get away from recently. They are just the perfect lash for my eye shape personally, but they're like that perfect in-between lash I would say. So they are the Eldora M108 and I will link them below for you. I'm going to pop a tiny bit of mascara on before I put the lashes on. I'm not going to make them really long and thick though because... I've actually got quite long lashes and I feel like with having hooded eyes and long lashes it's great because it makes your eyelashes look longer but when you're putting on fake eyelashes, if my eyelashes have got loads of mascara on and then I put them on it literally makes them look even bigger so I kind of need to like just use a tiny bit of mascara. So lashes are on guys, finally it's always such a struggle, you always get one on fine and then one is a total nightmare. <laughs> so they're on now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop my base on off camera and then I'll be back to show you what I would put with these eyes for like cheek and lip combinations. So I'll see you in just a sec. Okay. I've pretty much finished my base, I just did it very very similar to my last video that I made about contouring. So if you want to know how I've done this sort of base then please check out my last video, I'll link it below for you. I'm just going to show you what I would match with this just to make it look a little bit softer. So obviously the skin looks quite matte so I'm going to be adding a little bit of glow and I'm going to be pairing it with like more of a pinky peachy cheek and lip. First up I'm just going to be taking this blusher here, this is called Luminoso from Milani and my favourite blusher brush from my kit coat and I'm just going to be adding like a tiny bit onto the apples of the cheeks because I feel like that always makes it look a bit softer rather than having it up really high on your cheek. So I'm just going to add a little bit of this Charlotte Tilbury Light Magic Wand. This is honestly like one of my favourite highlighters and it's a cream so I'm just going to take a little bit out onto my hand. So that's what it looks like there, it's quite shiny and I'm going to tap off the excess and then I'm just literally going to be like pressing this on top and just keep patting it all around and this just adds like a little bit of a glow but it's like more of that glow from within rather than like a really thick and heavy shiny highlighter on the top. Finish, I'm just going to be using a lip combination that I just know and love and can rely on for any eye look. I think you always need that like go-to nude colour that you just know is going to look good with any eye. Starting off with Love Bite Lip Liner by Morphe and then I'm going to be using MAC Cherish Lipstick. It's just literally my perfect nude lipstick. Okay guys, so this is the finished look. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial today, something a little different and it just allowed me to get a little bit creative with my eyeshadow today. I just love creating different looks so doing this today really filled that void for me because I'm really missing just sitting down with clients and creating looks for you all. I hope this will inspire you to maybe be a little bit more adventurous with your eyeshadow choices in future. Also guys, if you did enjoy today's video, please don't forget to subscribe and give me a wee thumbs up because it really helps me out and I will see you guys in the next video.